Welcome, folks. I'm Fred Gleek, and I'm here with Bill Deweese, who is the star of the show. Bill, take it away. Oh, how you guys doing? Just, just adjusting my camera there. Uh, I'll leave that on for just a second so that you know I actually am here and do exist. So, how you guys doing? Welcome. So glad to have you here tonight. I know a life can be busy, so you taking a little bit of time out tonight uh, to be here. I greatly appreciate it. We're going to talk about really the fundamentals of what you need to know to build a voiceover business. So um, what I what I assure you is that the information you're going to get tonight is not just fluff. There's some real meat and potatoes here and some stuff that you can use. And this video will be available afterwards. So if you want to go back and review anything, you know, we'll have that there for you. And I just wanted to say, you know, up front, here's, I know this is a lot of verbiage here. Uh, the disclaimer is this, is that, you know, tonight I'll be sharing some numbers with you, my numbers, as well as, as a few other people. And so by sharing these, I'm not guaranteeing that you'll do exactly the same as I have or my, my students have done, but you'll have a sense of what can be accomplished. Um, of course, obviously, not everybody who wants to do something is willing to put in the work to do it. So obviously, I can't guarantee anybody else's results. But what I will do is I'll show you exactly how to build a voiceover business, which is precisely what I've done. And if you if you you know implement these um, these uh, systems and procedures and strategies, then you too can accomplish what you know myself and others have done in voiceover. Okay, so who is this webinar for? Well, if you're retiring soon, this is certainly something I think you should look into. Perhaps like myself, you're either a current or former broadcast professional. And um, not only me, but I work with a lot of um, uh, radio and television uh, folk uh, currently as well as, as, as retired. Uh, if you're a performer of any sort, if you're a salesperson, if you're a teacher, and you like to communicate in that way, or I work with a lot of actual uh, like preachers, pastors, those who are in ministry as well, or maybe you're just somebody who's currently frustrated with your uh, with your employment situation, and you're looking for something new, different, maybe a way to express the creative side of your personality. Then you have come to the you have come to the right place. Um, let me tell you a little bit a little bit about myself. Uh, only in that I think it's important if somebody's going to share with you how to do something and accomplish something. I think it's uh, it's on them to make sure that they communicate their credentials, and that's certainly what I want to do and let you know that I actually wrote the book on how to, to uh, start and build a six-figure voiceover business. It's a, The book's available on Amazon, and it's been there for quite a while, and it's helped many people in building their voiceover business. But it's not just something I teach, and I think this is important for you to know. I don't just teach voiceover. I do voiceover. It is my gig. It is my main thing. It is my livelihood. Over the past now almost 14 years, I've recorded over 10,000 paid voiceover projects, and here's just a sampling of some of the clients that I've worked with, Disney and Fox and John Deere and Microsoft and Warner Brothers, Google, the PGA Tour, Kroger, Lenovo, Party City, uh, Acer, QVC, Bear, DreamWorks, Ramada, Continental. And again, this is just a sampling to give you a sense of the kind of, uh, the kind of companies that I've worked with. And I've done everything from commercial work to promo work, I've recorded many audiobooks. I've recorded, oh my gosh, internal projects, uh, commercials, radio and TV. I mean, yeah, I, I, video games. I mean, you name it, you name it. I've done it when it comes to when it comes to voiceover. And also, I want to share with you um, again. I'm I'm telling the, you that you can accomplish something because it's something that I've accomplished. So let me prove that. Here's a letter from my uh, from my accountant uh, verifying that my voiceover. Not to be confused with voiceover training. This is what I make recording voiceovers for my clients. In 2017, my income was $286,444. And um, I just filed my taxes for 2018 on October the 15th. And so I now know that my revenue for voiceovers, again, not voiceover training, but recording voiceovers for 2018 was $356,965.14. I have not had a year in the past 14 years where I've actually gone backwards. I've always made more the, you know, with each passing year. And I'm on track to do even more than that for 2019. And we'll see how the rest of the year you know, uh, unfolds, but things are going very well and very busy. So again, all this, not to impress you, but to impress up on you, that this is something that is doable. It's something that I am doing. So the things I'm sharing with you are born out of actual experience. These are the things that I do to build my business and they're the things that I that I teach my students to do who also uh, you know are growing uh, successful voiceover businesses as well 
So there are three things. We're going to focus on three things tonight. When it comes to the fundamentals, and I talked about the fundamentals, you know, the, I'm not I'm not about making things more complicated, more intricate uh, than they than they have to be. We don't want to be, this to be complex, and it doesn't have to be. We're going to break it down into its most simplest into its simplest components, so that these are the things that I execute. These are the things that you can execute. The things you need to know and understand. Tech, performance, business. These are the three areas that you need to make sure that you have in shape. And if you have these three things going in the right direction and you know what you're doing, you can be reasonably sure that you can make money in voiceover. And so let's let's dive into each of these. And by the way, I'll leave some time for questions at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> so if things pop in your mind, things that you want to know, uh, you can, there's a question box that you can put enter that in. I'm not, I won't answer those now, but as I get toward the end of the webinar, I'll be glad to answer as many of those as I can. So let's talk about tech, first of all. The number one killer of voiceover opportunities, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, the number one killer of voiceover opportunities, I see it happen all the time. People go out, they get their training, they may you know, get a demo and they'll contact me and say, I don't know what's, what's, what's wrong. You know, I've, I've been marketing myself, I've been auditioning and I'm getting, I'm getting nada. I mean, zilch, nothing. The number one killer is bad audio. And oftentimes you don't even realize it's bad um, because you may not have a point of reference yet on what good audio and bad audio is within the context of voiceover. So the first thing that we have to look at, if, we, if we're doing a diagnostic check, the very first thing that we have to check is the quality of your audio. And you need to understand this, that great audio does not mean you have an expensive microphone. Expensive microphone equals great audio is a myth. As a matter of fact, a great microphone, an expensive microphone might be your undoing if you don't have the right space in which to work. Because the more expensive the microphone, the more sensitive the microphone. So here's what I want you to, to take away from this tech side of things. And that is a great space creates great audio. A great space creates great audio. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, you know, those of us in, you know, in 2019 who record voiceovers, the vast majority of us work from home. You know, so we all deal with the same kind of things. So finding a great place to record from home is our first big challenge. And there are two concepts that you need to be aware of. <clears throat> and by the way, I apologize in advance. As, as I mentioned, I record, I record a lot of voiceover work. I recorded about, I think, nine jobs today. And my voice is very raw. So if you hear me, you know, if my voice fades out or you hear me mute myself or if I accidentally clear my throat into the microphone, please forgive me. I'm, I'm going to try to stay as strong voiced as I possibly can, but I'm not, we'll, we'll see what happens. So soundproofing and sound treatment, these are the two concepts that you really need to, to understand when it comes to creating quality home audio. Soundproofing mean, meaning you need the quietest space possible. It's virtually impossible to have a soundproof room at home. I'm not saying it's totally impossible, but it's virtually impossible. None of us, nobody that I know, myself included, has a soundproof space. You know, if the, if the neighbor starts up a lawnmower or if you live where I live around the Chicago area, a uh, snowblower, or actually I live like out in a more rural setting, coyotes start howling at night. I mean, you just can't get away from all of that stuff, but you want to, you want to scout out the quietest space that you can in your home. So it, the, the two things that make up great audio are a quiet space, number one, and secondly is a well-treated space. And what I mean by treatment is that you don't want your voice bouncing off the walls like this, you know, that that boxy, echoey sound uh, where it sounds like you're sitting in a closet someplace. And you may be sitting in a closet, but you don't want it to sound like you're sitting in a closet. So sound treatment means we use materials, absorbent materials to absorb the sound, our voice, the excess, so it doesn't bounce back off the wall and back into the microphone. So what I want to do is share with you some tools that will help you in both of these areas so that you can create good audio. Because if you've got good audio, you already you're already head and shoulders above above you know most everybody else because the vast majority my experience has been especially for newbies new folks getting into voiceover the vast majority do not have great sounding audio so as I mentioned you got to find a good space so where might that be um, I worked out of our bedroom closet for the first four years that I recorded voiceovers 
And um, there's a great, you know, the great thing about about closets like this is they they tend to be not always, uh, but at least ours was internal. So the further you can get it away from outside noise, the better if it's an internal room. Um, but the other thing that really makes it awesome is that it's filled with clothing, soft material, which is absorbent. It's a natural uh, acoustic treatment. So being in, in a closet, if your if your you know spouse or partner will allow you to do that which my wife was very gracious in allowing me to use my half of the closet. <laughs> uh, and by, believe me, the more I did this, the more she bought into the whole idea. And we actually did some crazy things down the road, which I won't get deep into. But I mean, we were actually, we actually drilled holes in, in the wall to port cables so I could put the computer on the outside of the, the closet. And, uh, you know, it was a whole thing after we really got into it and started making money. And she realized, we both realized this is something I needed to continue to do. But if you have, if you're in a closet or even a spare bedroom, or uh, basements can be fantastic because they're you know underground so you're already shielded from a lot of noise at least from the outside maybe not from upstairs if you have small kids running around and that's why you really have to scout out space but find the quietest place that you can and then uh, you want to use materials again such as clothing in a closet can be good uh, let me share a few other things with you there's a product on the market called chaotica eyeball and it looks like a big nerf ball it's not it's acoustically designed engineered uh, but it looks kind of like a Nerf ball that sits over your microphone. And it helps to minimize some outside noise, but most importantly, it treats the audio. So it absorbs all the uh, the extra sound reflections. And you can go to chaoticaeyeball.com to check that out. I believe last I saw it runs like 199 bucks. And I, I own one of these. And so I've used it and tested it out. And it's a pretty nifty little product. Another thing that you can look into is acoustic foam. Acoustic foam uh, can be very effective. I mean, it's designed for absorbing sound reflections. The only thing that I will tell you here is just a heads up is that not all acoustic foam is created equal. Uh, when I first got into voiceover, I bought a bulk of cheap foam and thought I was getting a great deal, only to find out that cheap foam tends to be lightweight, it's not dense, and it's not nearly as sound absorbent as a heavier gauge or a heavier made, a denser made acoustic foam. And um, there's a, and by the way, um, you know, you neither Fred or I get reimbursed from these companies for mentioning these. We're mentioning them because we know from experience that these are things that work. There's a company called Auralex, A-U-R-A, A-U-R-A-L-E-X, Auralex.com. And they make the best acoustic foam that I've that I've used up to this point. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but they're they're one that I'm very familiar with. They've been around for a long time, and that's the foam that's actually in my booth that I'm recording from. It's heavy, it's dense, and it's very sound absorbent. Uh, a more cost effective thing that you can do, which I have also done, is using moving blankets. Moving blankets um, are wonderful, and they're not terribly expensive. And uh, if one is not thick enough to do the job, you can always lay on another one. And if that's not, you can put a third or a fourth. So, you know, you can make it to the thickness that you need for your particular application. So, um, you know, my students are very creative in using moving blankets and acoustic foam and finding spaces. I've had some who've, who have taken plastic PVC pipe and built a frame for like their own booth and then covered it in moving blankets. And it's worked very effectively. Um, I mean, there's no one right answer, but uh, again, moving blankets, that's another great option for for acoustic uh material another thing i haven't tried this yet but uh, i was at meyer last night and i was looking they have these these heavyweight blankets uh for people who have anxiety or ptsd maybe you've seen them they can weigh 12 pounds 15 pounds up to 20 pounds i've seen them and um these blankets are super heavy and i'm going to i'm going to buy one i'm going to experiment creating a a, a mobile booth with one to see i uh, i'm guessing they're they're pretty good in terms of soundproofing and sound treatment. But again, I haven't tested it out, but I'm going to. So there's, again, there's unlimited ways that you can do this. You're only limited by your own creativity, but those are some things to help. Let's talk about the microphone thing again. You know, I'm I'm not opposed to expensive microphones. I, you know, I own a number of microphones from inexpensive to very expensive. I, I actually own the microphone that you're looking at here in the PowerPoint. I wanted to to give it as a recommended starter mic. Uh, I mean, heck, I mean, you could, it doesn't have to be a starter mic. I mean, you could, you can make a lot of money with this mic. It's called the Fifine K670. You, you can find it on Amazon. That's where I found it. It runs under 50 bucks. And um, as a matter of fact, I, 
what I'm going to do, I had a student of mine the other day, a private coaching student, um, send me a sample of some, something she was working on and I listened to it. And I thought for sure she was using a, a high-end, super expensive microphone. And I asked her and I was blown away when she said, no, I'm using the Fifine K670. So what I wanna do, just to demonstrate, I'm going to switch over my sound cards so I can play this audio for you. So hang tight, I'm gonna play it for you right now. Well, maybe not. I'm getting the spinning beach ball of death. Ah, for well, some yeah. yeah, we'll try it. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, it that's right. Well, now every time I click it, I just get that. Huh? It worked when I tested it earlier. I apologize. Maybe if we have time, we can come back to that. Uh, but my point is this. You know, I started with a $50 microphone as well. And I, I mean, I made, I made a six-figure income consistently with that microphone. Um, I recorded national TV ads with that $50 microphone. And I'm not saying get a cheap microphone for a cheap microphone's sake, but I'm telling you that this microphone right here will do a very nice job for you. If it's in a good space, the space is, is supreme. It's far more important than the microphone. You take a $1,000 microphone and you put it in a poorly treated space that's loud, it'd be the worst mistake you could possibly make. It will pick up everything that's going on in that room. So again, I advise you to start with something like a Fifine K670. It's affordable and it sounds fantastic. And uh, one of my sons is an audio engineer who actually, um, he backs me up on this one. He's a big fan of it as well. And I trust his, I trust his opinion. Okay, so here's one other tool that I think mo just about every voice talent should have in their bag. And that is, it's an audio plugin that you use in, you can use in any recording software program. I use Adobe Audition. Some people use a free program called Audacity. There's Pro Tools, Logic, and I mean, there's a million of them. Uh, but this little plugin will work, will work on all of them. It's by Waves. Waves.com is where you find it. It's called NS1. And I'm not going to go into a big deep dive explanation, but I call it the magic eraser of background noise. If you have a constant low grade like sound in the background, like maybe the HVH, HVHC in your home or just kind of a, a low grade hissing, you know, very faint in the background, it won't take out loud barking dogs. But that, you know, constant low level noise in the background, this is, I mean, it's brilliant. And it's, it's you can get it on sale occasionally for as cheap as $29, I've seen it. So just go to waves.com, sign up for their newsletter. They do sales every weekend and just look for a sale and you can pick it up. Cheap, cheap, cheap. But every voiceover talent needs that. And again, these are all tools just to help you produce great audio. So remember, before you worry about great performance, before you worry about demos, before you worry all, make sure you, you can actually create great sounding audio. Trust me, it is extremely important. Okay, the second thing we wanna to touch base on is your performance skills. Because obviously at the end of the day, they, you know, clients are hiring um, a performance. It's gotta be great audio. That's, to them, that's a given. So you've got to give them great audio, but then you also need to be able to deliver the goods. Now, the good news about all of this is that if you, you, know, if you go back a few decades, this picture is, is somewhat representative of what the expectation was of voiceover, typically male, but also very traditional and very announcer, very articulate. And that was, that was the norm for voiceover. And um, you know, the bigger and the deeper the voice, the better. But nowadays, not only is it not required, usually it's not even desired by voiceover talent. Why is that? It's because there's been a major shift in the way we communicate as a society. I mean, if you go back a few decades, you know, the way, the way people in authority communicated to the rest of us, you know, the way parents communicated to their children, the way organizations, even like churches communicated to their parishioners, the way the government communicates to its people was very authoritative. And that is not so much accepted nowadays. What clients are looking for is authenticity, genuineness. They're looking for real people, all genders, races, ethnicities, ages. Um, and that I think that's the beauty of the voiceover industry right now is that it's wide open to virtually anyone. And these are just some uh, sample uh, clips I took from auditions I've received just to 
verify what I'm saying here. Look at some of the direction here. Sincere, simple, straightforward, contemporary. Please use your natural voice. <laughs> I love that. Use your natural voice. Don't use the announcer voice. Be natural. Uh, say it like an employee really said this stuff. Upbeat, happy, not an over-the-top announcer. And I could go on and on and on. But the point is, the vast majority of jobs out there are for people who sound real, who sound genuine, who don't sound like they're trying to be something that they're not. And again, the good news is that means it opens the door for just about anybody. And um, here's one of my uh, students who's in my in my my group coaching program, which I'll talk more about a little bit later on. He posted this in our private Facebook group. He said, "I avoided as a previous top 40 DJ of the past." Um, so he's a, he's a former disc jockey, and he he decided to get away from the, that hype thing and be not hyped. He tried to be the real person, and it worked for him. So again, being the real person works. And again, like I said, it's not just for for guys now. It's it doesn't matter. This is for everybody. Now, what I want to do now is actually get a few. If you like to read. This is an opportunity for you to get some coaching. And I thought I could I could talk all night about performance, but better if I show you and we demonstrate. And what better way than have you participate? So if you would like to read for me, I'm not even going to show you what it is yet. If you want to read for me, I want you to go into the question box and just put just type yes. And Fred's going to help to facilitate this. Um, but if he'll just put yes in there, he'll pick somebody and we'll bring him on and we'll I'll actually have you read. Okay, I'll now, I'm not, ex okay, so Dennis, let me grab you first here. Dennis Granger, one second, Dennis, I'll find you. And I'm going to unmute you, so get ready here. Uh, wait, it's a lot, a lot of people here. Here we go. Here's Dennis, you're unmuted. Dennis, go ahead. Oh, okay. Hey, Dennis, how you doing? Hi. Good, how are you? Good, nice to talk to you. Now, where, where are you at? Where are you located? I'm located in the uh, northeast part of Kankakee County. Oh, okay, you're like in my backyard. Yes, yes, I am. So what's what's your background? What do you do? Well, I was uh, used to have about 12 years in the emergency medical dispatch. Uh, I used to be a paramedic and a, a dispatcher, and now I'm a travel coordinator. So you're no stranger to a microphone? Yeah, absolutely not. I do okay. a lot of voice work uh, for different community events and things like that. Okay, so like more like a like a PA PA announcer yes, type, more of like stuff. an announcer, which I'm yeah. trying to avoid. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if you're doing PA announcing, that's what you do. So that's there's nothing wrong with that. So it's just a matter of we're just going to add some more tools to your tool belt. So can you see the this this script okay that I have up yes. on the screen? Okay, yes, so here's what I want you to do, and it's Dennis. I want you to read through this twice for me. I want you okay. to read it through once. I don't I don't want you to worry about how you read it. I just want you to say the words out loud to get familiar with it because you've never seen this before. So okay. you can just take your time, just read it out loud, but just kind of get familiar with it. And then once you've read through it, I want you to go back and read through it a second time. And the second time, I want you to read it uh, as if it's an audition. You know, if you're actually auditioning for a commercial, a TV commercial, how, how would you do it? So whenever you're ready. Okay. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food. Because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. Because of you... There is St. Jude. Good. Whenever you're ready, just read it like it's an audition. Okay. Uh, at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food. Because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. Because of you, there is St. Jude. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now here's, let, let me share something with you, and then, then I'm going to, to walk you through this commercial ultimately to get hired when, you know, we audition for our work. I mean, that's how we get work. We audition mm -hmm. for it. And the only way somebody is going to hire us is if they believe us when they hear us. And so what does that mean? To be believed, they have to feel, we have to make them feel something. If they feel something when they hear us, then that means it connects and they believe us. But the only way we can make them feel something is if we feel it when we read it. In other words, you can never sound good enough to get hired. It has nothing to do with having a great voice. Nobody really, at the end of the day, people don't hire you because you have a great voice. They hire you because they believe you. So you feel it, they feel it, and then it connects. It feels honest, it feels sincere, and it feels true to them. So that being said, uh, let me ask you this. As you read it, Dennis, how did, if this was a TV commercial, what does it look like to you? What do you see? What are the images you would see? Um, I, I see what, I, would, I guess I would see children in the background. Mm -hmm uh nursing care around them uh different doctors 
So, and I think I understand what you're saying. You have to really put yourself in that place and really you do. Yeah. Really, uh, really talk about it. Like you're standing right there. So as you were seeing these, these images in your mind, uh, what, how did that make you feel? How do you feel about that? Well, um, it's, if you it's were kind there, of, seeing Jews right now surrounded by these kids, how would how would you feel? Well, I think it would be a very sad environment, but then for others, it'd be very kind of happy for the the fact that they're getting treated and and they have a good chance. And but it's kind of a different emotions. I think I would be having. Yeah, and I'll tell you, at the end of the day, what you're doing here is you're selling hope. That's what you're selling, but yeah. but it has to be done in a way that's where there's a lot of compassion. People want to understand, people want to feel like you get it, you understand, you understand where they're coming from. So do you have kids? No, I don't. I've been married for 27 years and no children. <laughs> okay, well, let, let me ask you this. Uh, have you ever uh, had a loved one, uh, it doesn't have to even be a relative, but a loved one that has been in the hospital that you visited oh. and it was just a bad situation, just heartbreaking? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. I want you in your mind to go there and remember what it felt like to be in that situation where you feel powerless. There's really nothing you can do. That's how these parents feel about their kids. That's what you have to relate to. So just allow yourself to, to feel that sense of compassion and caring and, you know, relate to how the parent feels as you read it this time, okay? Whenever you're ready. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live because of you, there is St. Jude. Now, Dennis, that was much better. Okay, that was a big step in the right direction. So let's 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 bring this one home. Let's take it a step further. What I want you to do is I want you to think this this next time you read it. I want you to make the listener lean in to hear you. Don't push out to them. I want them to lean in to hear you. So I want you to speak barely above a whisper, but speak with a sense and feel the compassion as you read. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because the only thing a family should worry about is helping their child live. Because of you, there is St. Jude. How did that feel, Dennis? It felt compassionate. Uh, yeah, it sounded yeah. compassionate. It, it That made me want to listen because I believed you that time. That time, I the first time I felt like you were talking at me, you, you know, you were in the role of, of the PA announcer, which is a uh -huh. great role to be in if you're that's what you're doing. But for this, exactly. it's a much more intimate kind of thing. And that's you did it. Good job. Thank great. you. Thank you. Great job. Excellent. Thank All you. right. Let's so, let's grab another one, Fred. Yeah, I see. I guess I've got Megan here. Let me see. Bring her up. Megan, one second. OK, Megan, here you go. You're unmuted. Hello, Megan. Hey, Megan. Nice to meet you. Very good to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. Yes. Now, what is what's the accent that I hear? Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, okay. Now, is that where you're at right now? No, I'm actually. I live in Cincinnati. I've lived oh, in America yeah. for about ten years. So, but okay. I, I was born and raised in Johannesburg. My wife's from, from Westchester. Just. Oh, okay. Now, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a big Kings. Okay, we're big Kings Island fans. But anyhow, oh, I digress. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah. so I've got the script up on the screen. Can you see that okay? Yes, I do. So like, like we did with, uh, with Dennis, I just want you to read it twice. The first time, just read the words out loud, get familiar with it. And then the second time, uh, imagine that it's an audition and let's just hear what happens. Okay. We make salsa the way it's intended. Fresh, every day, from scratch. Real salsa, like it was meant to be since 1981. Carlos O'Kelly's. Good. Okay. Whenever you're ready, give us your best audition read. We make salsa the way it's intended. Fresh every day from scratch. Real salsa. Like it was meant to be since 1981. Carlos O'Kelly's. Okay. So now let me ask you, do you like salsa? I love salsa. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have like a favorite variety? Like, like for instance, I love uh, mango salsa is my favorite. Do you have like a type of salsa that's like the best? I do. Actually, mango is one of my favorites. I make it from scratch. It's a South African recipe. You do? Okay. So now, okay, now you got to tell us. So what do you put in the South African version of mango salsa? It's like all mango, a little bit of um, like lemon juice, lots of sugar. Oh, some my. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Oh, okay. You know, now read the script. Okay. 
We make salsa the way it's intended, fresh, every day, from scratch. Real salsa, like it was meant to be since 1981. Carlos O'Kelly's. Do you know what the difference between your first read and that was, Megan? No. <laughs> There was I, a reason I had you. I ask you questions. I wanted I you to talk about salsa the second time. <laughs> yeah, I wanted you thinking salsa, because you you made an emotional connection with that when when you said, "Oh, I make salsa," and then you started talking about it and how you make it. You you had an emotional connection, and so the next time you read it, you 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 carried that over with you. So one of the things I always tell my students is make every script personal. You know, ask how you feel about it. Have you have you had an experience with it? And um, that always helps. So that being said, let's let's do it one more time, okay? So um, let's uh, let's do this. Okay, this is what I call the springboard method. And what I want you to do, I want you, I don't know if you're in a place where you can do this, hopefully you can, but I just want you to shout out as loud as you can, I love salsa with all of the enthusiasm that you can muster. And then I want you to read the script. Okay, I'll, it's called I'll springboard. Wake my baby in the other room. <laughs> oh, okay, well, don't, don't don't do that then. Um, oh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, um, okay, don't don't scream it. Don't wake him up. But just say, just I want you with all of the the love of salsa you can muster. I love salsa, and then read the all script. Right. All right, I love salsa. All right, we make salsa the way it's intended, fresh every day from scratch. Real salsa, like it was meant to be. Since 1981, Carlos O'Kelly's. There you go. So each time you were getting more, you were getting away less from thinking about how you sounded and more about how you felt. And that's right. that is, that's how you get hired. The more it's about how you feel, you know, the more they can connect on an emotional level, the more work you get. So I hope you found that helpful, but thanks for reading. Good job. I did. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Okay. Now I don't think we have enough time for any more, but thank you yeah. everybody for putting, you know, your, 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 your vote in there. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, thanks. I always love to do that. So uh, the third and final fundamental is business. And, um, you know, I'll be honest with you. When I first started in voiceover, I I knew next to nothing about voiceover. I had worked in radio, so I, I knew that. But actually, that could work against you, too, because being, you know, a radio broadcaster, you don't bring the finesse to voiceover. You know, it's a, it's a whole day. It's, it's almost like, you know, a dentist, you know, being a PA announcer. It's almost more like that. So understanding and learning voiceover, that was that was a lot of work for me. But I did I do come from a background of business and marketing. And so I understood that. So having a great marketing plan and being willing to work hard in the marketing department can overcome and a lot of things, a lot of shortcomings. So while you're catching up on on the performance end, if you're marketing well, again, you can overcome a lot of things. So the first I think to understand marketing, we first of all need to understand what all what voice work work is. I mean, how broad, how deep is this industry? The average person only thinks about the things that you see. When you say voiceover, they think TV, radio commercials, that's obvious. The big network TV promos, that's obvious. Movie trailers, everybody knows that's a voiceover. Cartoon characters. But what a lot of people don't understand is that's only the tip of the iceberg. If that's all there was, there wouldn't be that much work out there. But thank goodness, and especially with the explosion of video media, over the past 10 or 15 years, it's so cheap now to create media, video. Uh, and a lot of that requires voiceover, that now we have all kinds of opportunities. Online videos for products and services, and maybe you've heard of explainer videos, that would be a large part of that. Video games and digital toys, telephone recordings. You know, I'm. it's 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 crazy. I mean, you know, people just, they, they now, they used to do their own, you know, on hold stuff. But nowadays, most people outsource that because they can hire a professional voice to do it. Apps, a lot of apps require voices. Um, in movie th theaters, not the trailers, but what they call the pre-movie, you know, the pre-roll, the pre-movie -pre commercials. I've done a lot of that work. And there's a lot more. There's commercials not just on a national scale, but also on a regional scale and a local scale. There's there's um, there's e-learning. I mean, today, I'm just trying to think of all I did today. Today, I, I recorded a couple of internal training projects for Coca-Cola. I recorded a commercial for Mayo Clinic in Wisconsin. I recorded TV promos for the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Um, gosh, there's a whole lot more. Most of it was internal, but there's, there's a broad variety of things. And the great thing is the opportunities continue to increase because again, the media is so cheap to make that everybody's making it. And so it creates more opportunities for voice. Now, 
you've got to have the right tool for the job. I like to use the, you know, when I think, when I think of marketing, I think of fishing. You've got to have the right tools, the right bait in the right place. And the first thing you need to think about in terms of a marketing tool is a demo. Now, traditional voiceover wisdom was that you dare not enter into the voiceover industry or try to establish yourself as a voiceover talent without a professionally produced demo. Now, as you pursue voiceover and head down the road, there will come a time and a place where it will be appropriate and good for you to have a professionally produced demo. But the good news is, with all of the opportunities that exist today in the new emerging platforms, you do not have to start with a quote unquote pro demo, uh, but you can actually do a do-it-yourself, a DIY demo. And the students that I work with, you know, in my private coaching group, they almost all of them start with a do-it-yourself demo. So I want to walk you through that process because, and then I'm going to share with you the platforms where you can use that DIY demo. So for your DIY demo, really all you need to do, I don't want you to worry about sound effects and music. Don't worry about that. All we need is good, clean audio, just your voice. That's all we need. And so I want you to, I want you to find and transcribe for commercials. Now you can find these commercials by actually getting real commercials. Go to YouTube or iSpot.tv and look up some commercials that you like and transcribe them. That is how you get good scripts. And no, it's not illegal to, to do that. It's called fair use. You use a portion of a commercial. You're not, you're not selling it for profit. It's for demonstration purposes and it's standard practice in demo, in creating demos. So you want four different scripts. Now this is important, this last bullet point here. You want four different script styles. For instance, maybe something that's, you know, that's upbeat or something that's powerful or friendly. It's like, you know, going back to our scripts before, here's one we didn't do for the Chevy Silverado. So if maybe if you want to do a truck, you know, it's more, it's um, a little more authoritative and straightforward. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road, Chevy Silverado. And if you're doing the, you're doing the, the hospital commercial, it's more compassionate and feeling. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, families never receive a bill for treatment, travel, housing, or food. Because of you, there is St. Jude. Or something that's more up-tempo. We make salsa the way it's intended. Fresh, every day, from scratch. Real salsa, like it was meant to be. So right there are three different examples. I mean, that's you don't need to overcomplicate it. Get four scripts. Each of them should last about 15 to 20 seconds long. Put those together. And that, my friends, is a commercial demo. You can do the same thing with corporate or e-learning, but I would start with a commercial because most clients, regardless of what they hire you for, they want to hear your commercial demo. So, and once you make that demo, here's something else that I always tell my students. I recommend that you re-record it. You can use the same scripts, but just re-record it, re-edit it once a week for at least two months. The reason for that is because every time you do that, every week you're gonna get better, it's gonna get better, you'll, you'll sound more confident, your skills will develop. And so after a month, it's going to sound a lot better than when you first start. And then two months later, it's gonna sound, you won't even recognize it compared to when you first started. So redo it again for at least six to eight weeks. And then uh, what do you do with that DIY demo? Well, the first place I recommend is a website called Fiverr. I like to keep my eye on new and emerging platforms that give the best opportunity for people who are starting in voiceover. Uh, and not even just starting, but some of us who are established are now taking advantage of Fiverr, which I'll share with you in just a moment. There's a misconception that this particular website is a, is a website where you can only do jobs for five bucks. Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, my daughter, Mallory, uh, who also records voiceovers, she signed up for Fiverr at the beginning or is it either at the very end of last year or the beginning of this year. But over these past several months, uh, she has built a sizable voiceover income through Fiverr. This month, she will wrap up tomorrow somewhere between six and seven thousand dollars that she will have made on Fiverr on a part-time basis. She works for me. She runs my voiceover office on a full-time basis. So this is what she does on a part-time. Can you imagine making five, six, seven thousand dollars a month on a part-time basis? And then uh, I was so impressed with her success that I signed up on Fiverr. Now, here's the caveat. It's under, this is under a category called Fiverr Pro. Mallory is not under Fiverr Pro. She's just rank and file Fiverr. Uh, but Fiverr, because of my experience and because of my clients that I've worked with, they wanted to put me under, under a category of Pro. The only difference is that if you're under Pro, they expect you to charge more. So, you know, I charge more 
than than the average person. But just to give you a sense, by the way, you can charge whatever you want. That's that's really that's the punchline with Fiverr. It doesn't matter who you are. You can charge whatever you want. Um, so these are my most recent jobs. There's an $850 job, $1,085, a $100, $675, $193, $600, $350, $240. So, um, and it's growing. You know, every month I make a little bit more than I did the month before. But Fiverr is a legit platform. And when you're getting started and once you have that DIY demo uh, ready, I recommend that you create your profile. It's free. Fiverr's free. They will take 20% of whatever you make. That's how they, that's their business model. They're basically like a talent agent in that regard. Uh, you get a job, for instance, I do a thousand dollar job. They take 200 bucks off the top. That's how that works. But it's no money out of my pocket up front. So that's the first place you go. I would recommend you create that DIY demo and you get that profile set up as quickly as you can. The next thing that you want to look at is acx.com. Right now, this is the simplest way to find audiobook work. And without going into a big explanation, it's owned by, by Amazon. And this is Amazon's way of trying to get more audiobooks into the marketplace. And it doesn't cost anything to set up a profile. So I'd recommend setting up a profile. Uh, you can use the DIY format to create an audiobook demo too. You can take three or four audiobooks and just record a few snippets and upload those. And you can begin auditioning immediately. Once you have a, once you have a profile up, and I, this is just a screenshot I took, um, usually when I look, it's between a thousand to 1500 titles that are up for audition on at any given time. And you can pick the genres that you're interested in. Um, but that's a lot of books, my friends, <laughs> that's a lot of books up for audition. And I wanted to give a few other platforms, honorable mention. One is upwork.com. Uh, more and more of my, of my students are finding success on Upwork. As a matter of fact, I just took the screenshot today out of my private coaching group on Facebook. Uh, Ivan always uh, said he's, you know, he's made 940 bucks now on Upwork. And he just recently, you know, set up his profile and started. Another website you might want to check out is voicebunny.com. This is by no means an exhaustive list of all the ways you can make money in voiceover. Uh, but these are some of the best that I know of for those who are just getting started. So if you're just getting started, this is a great place to go with a DIY demo to get things up and running. Now, with that said, you really have two choices. One is you can take all this stuff, go back and study it, and you can do it yourself. And you can do it yourself. Um, but you do have another option, that is do it with my help. Now, what's the advantage of doing it with my help? Well, I've already walked through all the landmines. I, I've been there and I've done that. It will save you time, it'll save you frustration, and probably a lot of money as well. Uh, but if you decide that you want help and you want to be a part of a community where there's support, and giving you the shortest path, uh, shortest path from point A to point B, then I want to invite you to find out more about my voiceover blueprint program. And so I want to share with you what this program is. And then, as I said, we'll get to your questions here in just a moment. But the voiceover blueprint came about as over the years, you know, I started coaching about about 10 years ago. And, uh, and I, you know, I would I would teach a class or create a course on this topic. And then I would create a course on that topic. And eventually I just decided I wanted to create a comprehensive A to Z. Uh, somebody recently told me it's almost like going to voiceover university. You know, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to come in bits and pieces. I want you to be able to, to enter the path at the beginning and then to work your way systematically through an entire education and not just have education though, but also have, in addition to, you know, the, the coursework or the training to also have a chance for feedback and interaction. So the, the voiceover blueprint consists of three fundamental things. One is 70 plus hours of training, on-demand streaming. Everything from on you know how to set up your home studio, how to record and edit audio, set your levels, process your audio, all the stuff that has to do with audio, to um, how you market yourself and all the you know in-depth training and all of the different marketing strategies and how to create your marketing plan and so on and so forth, uh, to how to perform and get, get behind a microphone. And like I said, 70 plus hours. I mean, it's, it's a lot of training, but it covers everything you need to know. So there's that. So you have that and you have access to it forever. And it's, uh, you know, and it has a learning path. You start at A and you work your way through to Z. The next is the interactive, you know, the interactive coaching part of it. And so I provide approximately 15 hours of live group coaching per month. Um, some of these group coaching uh, sessions are just about marketing. 
Some of them, oh, there's one uh, that we do, it's just about Fiverr. And actually my daughter Mallory teaches it because she's having incredible success. She teaches me, she's the one who taught me how to use Fiverr. So that's a, an ongoing um, coaching um, group that we have that, that you could be a part of, that we hope you would be a part of. Uh, so whether it's marketing, whether it's performance, uh, whether it's Fiverr, uh, just earlier today did a Q&A for the coaching group. Plus we let people read so I can give them feedback. So there's lots of interaction as well. And then the third component is the private Facebook group. So there's a couple of things there. One is you've got the support of the community, you know, the wisdom of the crowd. And there's, you know, when you have questions and you need immediate feedback, it's great to know there's a group of people, you know, who are there, who have been there and can give you feedback and help along the way. In addition, you know, to myself, um, in addition to that, I think one of the, the best parts of that particular aspect of the program is the fact that I stream live as I work. So when I'm doing a project, I turn on my camera, you can see my desktop, so you can see my, my script I'm working with. If I'm doing an audition, if I'm doing a project, if I'm editing a project, uh, you know, if I'm doing a live session, like today I did a live session for the Billy Graham organization where they directed me. So you could hear what I heard in my headphones as they directed me to do the promos. So you learn not only by me telling you what to do, you learn by watching, because this is what I do, like I said, for a living. And I usually record somewhere between five to 10 jobs a day. And sometimes I'm, I'm under a non-disclosure, uh, especially when I'm working with pharmaceutical companies that do a lot of that kind of work. But otherwise, you know, I stream so you can watch and you can, you can participate, you can ask questions. And um, you know, it's, a great, it's a great way to actually learn how to do this from somebody who's actually, who's actually doing it. And if this is something that, you think you would like to explore further if you think this might be the right program for you then what i invite you to do is simply let's you know set up a phone call so you can find out and you can do that at this website theblueprintcall.com log on there pick a time that works for you and we'll get a phone call scheduled for you and explore and see whether this is uh, you know see if it's right for you uh, but if you're wanting to get into voiceovers would love the opportunity to work with you fred unless there's anything you have to add to that let's let's dive into questions Oh, I may have lost Fred. He told me he was having some problems with his uh, internet. So what I've done, I've opened up the question box here. So, oh, oh, Henning from Germany. Awesome. Yeah, good morning. It's good to have you here. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? Let's see, I'm just gonna work my way through here so I get to your questions. Uh, David says he bought one of those weighted blankets that I mentioned. It works great. Hey, <laughs> that's good to know. Good to know before I lay down my 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, Brian is saying the NS1 noise suppressor is on sale now, regularly 149, now on sale for 69. Awesome, Brian. Good. Now, if you hang out a little bit longer, it, it occasionally goes on sale for 29. Um, let's see here. Okay. I'm just scrolling here, looking through your questions. Okay. Pacing for how fast is too fast? How do you know if you're going too slow? Phoenix, a couple of things. One is if it's a timed script, let's say you have a 30 second script. Well, that will tell you what you need to know. Obviously, if you, you know, if it takes you 35 seconds to read it, you've got to read faster. If it takes you 25 seconds, you're gonna to have to pick up the pace a little bit. But aside from that, how do you know? I will tell you this, in my experience, and I've worked with hundreds of students, 99% of those students tend to read too fast. The tendency is almost always to read too fast. And this was one of the hardest lessons for me to learn in voiceover, it took me several years to finally realize I needed to slow down. Better to err on the side of going too slow because the slower you go, the better, the more you can think about what you're saying and the better you can connect with the script and the more effectively you can communicate the message, the slower the pace. So err, always err on the side of being slower. I would rather have a client tell me, hey Bill, let's pick up the pace than whoa, slow, slow down because that's the mistake almost everybody makes. Okay, let's see here. I'm surprised you mentioned Fiverr. I haven't used it, but was told that if I do, not to let anybody know because you can get back blacklisted. You know, Zeb, that blacklisted, that is, that's nonsense. Who can, I mean, blacklisted by who and who cares? I mean, are these the people that are, the people that are supposedly blacklisting are not, they're not there to, they're not gonna grow your, your business for you and they're not gonna pay your bills. And most of them don't, they don't have a clue how Fiverr works. Most people still think that it's a $5 job. You know, it's a $5 job platform. As you can see, it's clearly not. I'm making jobs, have jobs that pay over a thousand bucks. So I would say, you know, 
screw that. Forgive me, but that's 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 the attitude that I take towards that. Otherwise, if you're beholden to what everybody thinks about everything, you'll never make any progress in voiceover. Uh, is it necessary to set up an LLC? Uh, Megan, you know, here's the thing. I would strongly advise that you talk to your accountant because everybody's situation is different. A lot of it will have to do with state tax laws and where you're from and all of that. Uh, I will tell you, my my accountant has me set up as a corporation. When I first started, I was just a sole proprietor. But then as I started making you know quite a bit more money, he moved me uh, into a, uh, a corporation. But speak to an accountant because they can help you take advantage. And you will need to. I mean, I I paid more in taxes this year, about twice as much than I used to make as a salary. Uh, because you know, and when you're when you start getting in bigger bigger numbers, you really need professional help because you need to mitigate. <coughs> so sorry, excuse me. You need to make sure you're not paying any more than you absolutely need to. Okay, let's see here. The people are seen you know, a fiver. Okay, yeah, the blacklisted question again. I tell you guys, that is just not the whole blacklist thing is nonsense. It is nonsense. These people are not trying to help you. They're trying to intimidate and scare you. Um, do you record and edit on the same computer in the same space? Yes. I do. I record everything. Excuse me a second. Again, my throat. Excuse me. Yes, I use one computer and everything's on the same screen. My recording software, if I'm using, I'm, you know, I do my telephone calls for, with clients using Skype, my source connect. Uh, I mean, everything. I do everything on one screen, one computer. Okay. Oh, Adrena, thank you. Appreciate you being here. Can a room be too sound treated? Um, Luciani, it's possible. I rarely find that. Usually, you know, 99% of the time it's undertreated, not overtreated. I it would be a better problem that it be overtreated. Um, but it's possible. It's possible, but that usually isn't the problem. Dennis wrapped blankets around a PVC framed sound booth and he thinks it works well. Fantastic. What computer do you use? Um, how much memory? Uh, you know, first of all, Jay, it really doesn't matter whether you use PC or Mac. It does. I've used both. I used a PC for a long time. I'm now using a Mac. I've been using a Mac now for the past 10 years, not because it's better for voiceover. It's better for video. I do a lot of video production, so I like it for that, but it doesn't matter. Um, and you know, it, you don't, for, audio has minimal requirements, minimal for processing. So you can use the minimal, you know, I wouldn't, you don't need to have more than eight mega or eight gig. <laughs> See, you tell how old I am. I'm uh, back. You don't need more than eight gig. Or, hey, welcome back. Yeah. Just kind of working my way through the questions. I'm on Jay Kirk right now. I'll, I'll finish that up and then I'll let you take over from there. Um, you know, eight gig is plenty. Um, if you can get a solid state hard drive, all the better because it's quieter, but you don't, you know, you could use a five-year-old. I mean, actually, We've got a 10 year old computer in this house that we do some voiceover work on and it works just fine. So you don't need anything special. Joe, do you, I mean, um, I'm sorry, Fred, do you want me to keep plowing through here or do you need me to show you where we're at? You can see it all now, but I just okay, don't know cool. what computer I see, what computer you use, gotcha. Uh, do you have your copy? Do you have your copy on the computer screen or print it out and do hard copy? He's wondering. Yeah, I never, I never print it. I just do it right off the screen, PDF or Word document or whatever they give me. Okay, and what about, um, he's asking about whether or not a room can be too large to do recordings in. Uh, no, if it's large, the thing is you just have to make sure it's treated well. Uh, it's going to require more treatment the larger it is. But no, it's you can deal with a large room. <laughs> I love this question after today's session you had, you told me. Jay's again asking, do you have a ratio per day you trying to hit? How much marketing, how much recording? Uh, have you had a chance to do any marketing in the past three, four weeks? No, I mean, I, I stay booked. I mean, like I said today, you know, I made a lot of money today and I'll make a whole lot of money tomorrow. And it's just, it's just day after day. I do very little. My marketing now is usually the way my interaction with my current clients, because now I've built it up to a place where I have mostly repeat clients. Good, good, good. Okay. Let's see what else we have there. Uh, Oh, did you get the, you got the question earlier about uh, all the negative stuff about Fiverr, right? I'm sure you yeah, got yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, finding work on Craigslist. How do you do that? Well, the way I use it, um, I use Google. 
And um, and so just a quick crash course, use Google, enter in the term Craigslist, or first, that's the first thing you enter. And then you follow that, come up with a list of terms related to voiceover, voiceover, voice talent, you know, you can come up with a long list. And then that's how you search Craigslist. Got it. It's a global search. Good, good, good. Okay. And so one of the things I'm going to put in the chat, let me just see here, uh, new to Adobe Audition, like I would probably be making my demo on it. It's hard, is, is it very hard to pick up or are there things that you absolutely do and absolutely don't do? I think, I think that's regarding a new demo, things that you should and shouldn't do. Yeah, well, you know, with a demo, keep it simple. Just make it dry voice, meaning no, no music, no sound effects. <clears throat> and for, as far as Adobe Edition, it's just like Microsoft Word. You'll only use 1% of its capability. Most of the stuff on Adobe Edition, I don't even understand what it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I record and I edit. That's all I do. And, and that's, Shan, you know. Sorry, sorry to step on you. Shan, Shan's got a question we hear a lot. Uh, how do you help fi students find their niche? Do you listen to their voice and help them find the area for their voice? Uh, that's a good question. The answer is N-O. Yeah, no, the market will tell you. You, you. What you do is you just go out there, do your, do your commercial demo, and you start marketing yourself. And what will happen is you'll find over time, people will begin to choose you for the things that you're best at. That's the only way. Me telling you ahead of time will, won't do you any favors. There's no way for me to know. There's no way for you to know. The market will tell you over time. Yep. 100%. Do you sit or stand when you record? I sit uh, because, you know, I do it all day long, but it doesn't matter. It's whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay. Jay's asking, do you slate on your demos? Nope. No. Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, do you pay, do you base, Tom's asking, do you base your fee per job, per word, et cetera? How do you price? Oh, you know, it all depends. I mean, if it's like e-learning, it's going to be per finished minute. Um, I quoted a job. I'm doing a project projects tomorrow for like Scott's lawn care, and I'm doing that on a per page basis. Um, I'm do I did a, a commercial today uh, for uh, Mayo Clinic, and that will be there was a charge for studio for the actual session, and then they'll pay me for how much they use it. So I mean, it, there's no one answer there. It, it's all different shapes and sizes. And in the blueprint, also uh, Bill has his rate sheet that you get. And yeah. while we're doing this, I'm just going to put the uh, www.theblueprintcall.com. Hold on, let me send that here. There you go. Everybody's got that. And this is a good question. Uh, by the way, I can answer this question because your voice isn't so good. Uh, from Doug, uh, Pro Tools is a recording software primarily for used by musicians. It is complete Doug overkill in the voiceover industry. You've got things on there that's that's way, 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 way eons past where you need to be. You can do Audacity, which is free. That's a piece of free software you can use. And Bill uses Adobe Audition, but the Audacity is perfectly fine just starting out. Would you agree, Bill? Right on. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, let's see here. Um, huh, what, what gigs are the most profitable? We'll end on this one from Shannon. What gigs are the most profitable? Is it with repeat clients over time? Good question. Well, that's where I make most of my money is repeat clients. Uh, I mean, I could say per job, if you can do national TV ads, those pay the best, but there aren't that many of them. So, you know, that's not where I focus my energies. I get them, but that's not where, where I focus my energy is where I'm making a few bucks over and over and over and over again every day. And, and it adds up to a lot of money. That's So that's how I make my money. And to, to close out the evening, Bill, why don't you tell people again, who would be best suited to setting up a call to talk about the blueprint. Yeah, you know, if if you're in a position where you, you know this is what you want to do and you know you have some financial resources because I'll be honest with you it's not a cheap program. This is I mean we're talking about you're getting into a business here. Uh and if you are going to buy a McDonald's franchise or you know I know if you've priced out businesses they're very very expensive. This is nothing like that. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying it's going to require there there is a financial commitment but more importantly the commitment that you're going to actually that you're going to follow through and do this now that doesn't mean you need to do it you know spend eight hours a day you might only have a few hours a week but you need to be able to spend some time with it because it requires some consistency over a period of time and so and it requires you know you've got it it doesn't happen in a week or two weeks it happens really you begin to generate income over a matter of a month or two or three and then uh that's when you start to see the return come back to you so if this is something you, you know, you think, eh, I'm going to try it out for a week or two, then don't, you know, don't bother because you can't build a business that way. But, you know, Bill, I was 
I was thinking of the fact that, you know, people ask, and I, I, since I work with Bill and Handel, the training side of the business, I can tell you the one thing that's really interesting to me, and I get this question all the time, and I usually come up with, depending on how many hours you have, I would say that to break even with this course, depending on how many hours you commit to, will take you somewhere in the neighborhood of between a low of five, four or five months to a high of 12 months to pay for the course with the work that you will get. I think yeah. from everything I've seen, the Bill, that's about right. Yeah, I think you're right in the ballpark there. Yeah, and again, the nice thing is, as opposed to other places, once you pay off the course's investment, you know, the money is yours forever. Now you have a skill that can take you through literally the rest of your life. I mean, think of the people, there are people into their 80s and 90s still doing voice work. And my kids are now doing this. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how gratifying that is. My daughter, I mean, she makes way more money than I ever made in my professional life, recording voiceovers part-time. It's crazy. It's phenomenal. Anyway, thank you, Bill. I know your voice is in bad shape. I really appreciate everyone being here. Just say goodnight. And oh, thank we'll, you. We'll lock it up for everybody. Thank you for All being right. here. Oh, uh, bye-bye.